during missions against the enemy, operated automatic cameras in their planes. Behind the pilot, shooting forward and back. Under the wing. In the wing, timed with the guns. In the wheel well. In the instrument panel, photographing the pilot himself. Italian man in the street, or what's left of the street, this is the fulfillment of a promise. The promise of the fascists to build a 20th century Roman Empire, conceived in tyranny and dedicated to the proposition that some men were meant to be slaves of other men. Special victims were the children. They saw things not meant for children's eyes. From the air, Italy is more remote. The airman never sees the face of the people, only the face of the country. From the air, you look down at the mountains. Look down and wonder how our men on the ground ever got through. Mountains and rivers. The Volturno, a lot of American blood in that one. Natural barriers made other campaigns tough too. Exhausted Hannibal's elephants, Caesar's legions. For the airmen, the ground war is remote. The only war you really understand is the air war. You can see a pattern to it. Lots of the country never been touched. Little towns that walk the ridges, like tightrope artists, to keep from falling off. This one didn't matter. When something did matter, that was another story. This is how we changed the face of Italy, from the air. Boasted Italian trains ran on time. Not these. This is what we did to the face of Italy. There's a story behind why we did it and how we did it. The story starts on an island, 60 miles off Italy's coast, the island of Corsica. Corsica, rugged, primitive, mountainous. Malario. Here they still remember a local boy who put Corsica on the map 150 years ago. This island part of France was liberated by the French in September 43, but you can still find a few Germans left by the wayside where they fell in the shadow of our airdromes. Alto Air Base, Sunday morning. Here, Sunday is like Monday, and Monday is like every other day in the week, a working day. The engines wake you at dawn. In your sack, you can hear the crew chiefs pre-flighting your planes, getting them ready for the day's missions. This is how you live when you're an airplane driver, fighting an air war, 20 minutes from the Germans in Italy. You're used to it. You've been washing out of your helmet since July 42. From the Holy Land to Africa, 
across the desert, Egypt and El Alamein, to Libya and Tunisia. 1,300 miles. You moved when the infantry moved. Sicily and Italy. 58 moves in two years. Now Corsica. This is the best deal you ever had. Call it the country club. When you talk about air power, this is what you mean. You mean Spanky Manda. Major Francis S. Manda of Metcomore, New Mexico. Squadron operations officer. Not a desk job. Had over 170 missions, working for 200. He's 22. You mean Captain Howard Hickok of Ames, Iowa. He's a flight leader. Just had 30 days in the States. Time to get married and come back. He's 23. Or, in his Italian general's trailer, Gil Wyman, Louisville, Kentucky. Hardly looks old enough to vote, but he's boss of a squadron. He signed his letters, Gilbert O. Wyman, Lieutenant Colonel, Air Corps, commanding, the old man. He's 24. Sunday morning, for the 57th fighter group, three squadrons, a thousand men, another day begins at Alto Air Base. You could close your eyes and see it this way. Spread out like a diagram. Been home sweet home for some time. Good steel mat runway. 150 by 6,000 feet. Tower call sign is breakneck. Lots of jokes about that. We share the field with a French fighter group. Don't speak the same language, but we fly the same airplane against the same enemy. Each lost a man yesterday. We get along. Group commander, Lieutenant Colonel Archie J. Knight, West Point, 1940, East 27. The first mission today is a 6-5 squadron show. Briefing, right after breakfast. Informal, short, to the point. Park yourself in a bomb crate and get your escape kit. Enemy money. Instructions to get you back through the lines. Just in case. The S2 tells you about your target. He doesn't have to draw it for you. You do this every day. Sometimes two or three times a day. Gil Wyman will lead the show. So he lays out the job. That's a nurse's hat. This girl wears it for luck. Eat all you can get. The brass upstairs plans the war. They want something done, they pick up the phone. You do it. Don't always know why they send you out on a mission. Don't always care. But you know there's a reason, a good one. Today, the missions are going out because in Italy, our armies have been stopped, cold, at the Gustav Line, across the narrowest and most mountainous part of the peninsula. U.S. Fifth Army, British Eighth Army, stopped for five months. At Anzio, a hundred thousand men sweating it out. We couldn't move. Stalemate. March 15th, we bombed Casino, our immediate objective. Good job of bombing. Didn't work. Our infantry didn't advance. It was the wrong use of air power. Wrong because we were not taking advantage of the airplane's greatest asset, its ability to get behind the enemy. That's what the air planners wanted to do, get behind him. Lieutenant General Ira C. Aker, commanding all the air in the Mediterranean, British, French, and American. Major General John K. Cannon, Uncle Joe, commanding the 12th Air Force. And Brigadier General Gordon P. Seville, 12th Tactical Air Command the brass upstairs who run the air war. They said, let's not hit him here. Let's hit him here. Let's isolate the battlefield. Let's weaken the entire German front. 
by depriving it of supplies, fuel, food, ammunition, reinforcements. They call the plan Operation Strangle. This is what we want to do with airplanes. How? A lot of railroads in Italy. This is the enemy. Keep the trains from getting through. A lot of rivers in Italy and over 700 major bridges. We figured if a train came to one and it wasn't there, it'd be kind of tough to get across. Medium bombers got many of the important ones, but bridges are long, narrow targets, difficult to hit and destroy. Took a lot of trips, bombs, planes, men. We started to use a special weapon. A fighter bomber, the P-47 Thunderbolt. One engine. One man, one bomb on each wing, extra fuel tanks for range. Six fives crew chiefs taxi from the dispersal points to the end of the runway. Line up the squadron. All the pilots have to do is climb in and take them away. If you're a crew chief, you've got your own P-47. Sometimes you think of it as your personal airplane. The pilot's a fellow you lend it to every day. You let him fly around in it, and you expect him to bring it back in good condition. No bullet holes or flak holes. After you've been lending your airplane to one pilot for a long time, you get attached to him, too. If you're a pilot, no matter what your rank or how many hours you've had, what counts here is the combat flying you've done. Unless you've done plenty, you're a beginner. You're called a sprog. And you remain a sprog until you're wise to the tricks of the trade. After you put a few missions behind you, you become a sport. Then, with plenty of action, 50 or 60 missions, if you're still around, you're promoted. You become an old sport, a veteran. The big shots, like Gil Wyman, are called wheels. No one knows exactly why. This fellow's a wheel, too. Says so in his plane. Major Richard O. Hunziger of Tucson, Arizona. Got 179 missions. Your crew chief can't go along, so you always like to tell him what you're going to do. Got a triple threat mission today. Each section's going after a bridge. I'll come in on a course of about 40 degrees. Same old thing. Go out there and dodge around in the ack ack Dive bomb out of a left-hand turnabout and carry the bombs right on down. We're flying top cover on the other two sections while they bomb, and then we go in ourselves. Weather's supposed to be cavu, so maybe we'll have a good show. All set to go, but you don't. You wait. You wait for five minutes. That's the way it's planned. Time to settle down. Relax. You'll be busy later. So if you've got any thinking to do, and who hasn't, now's the time to do it. Takeoff is always rough. Thunderbolt's a heavy airplane. Besides, you've decorated it like a Christmas tree. Belly tank. Rockets. Guns. 500-pound bombs. Cameras. Hello, Breakneck. Call the leader here. We clear to take the runway for a takeoff. Over. 
Roger, call the leader from Breakneck. You're clear number one to take off. Roger, Breakneck. Thank you. The mile of steel runway will shrink to nothing under you. Halfway down, by the tower, you'll be committed. That means you can't slam on the brakes and stop. Once you're committed, you usually go up. First pair, Wyman and Gustafsson. Bear taxis out. Goss and Burgess. Made it okay. Manda and Richardson. Hunziger. The squadron is airborne. Then out to sea, on the deck. Sixty miles east to Italy. Flying from Corsica, you go only sixty miles you're 150 miles behind the German front. Turn again on that castle. Now you're heading north. Into the mountains. Leader section. Red section. Black section. Formation flying. A game of follow the leader. The squadron leader. He navigates makes the decisions. Doesn't tell you what to do, does it? You follow. Wingtip to wingtip. He turns, you turn. He climbs, you climb. still to 10,000 through the clouds. Getting close. Start looking for the target. Stuck down there in one of those ravines. All look alike. Wingman, he's back. Keep the formation spread out. There's a checkpoint. That road. 
follow it down to the river. First bridge should be down there, somewhere. There it is. Pass over it. Come back and attack from the opposite direction. One of the tricks you've learned. Leader section. Goes into loose string formation. One plane behind the other. Then, Wyman peels off. of the section follows at two second intervals. Last man goes in. No bomb sight in the P-47. Pilot does his own aiming. Bomb bursts from the planes ahead. A couple of misses. Direct hit. I hope your aim is good. Drop your bombs. Pull out. They black you out for a second. Blood drains from your head. You're young. It comes back fast. You're all right now. Leader section reforms. Top cover. Watch his red section bomb. A miss. Another miss. squirts. Might kill somebody. Bust the locomotive first. Train can't move now. Let's see what's in those boxcars. Twelve of you. You'll all crisscross in. Everybody takes a few passes. Try the cars one at a time. Might be something interesting in them. Usually is. Got it burning nicely now. Take another pass. For luck. Strafing spreads the squadron over the sky. Every man his own general. Looks like we're out of trains. Lighthouse out there. Wonder if I've got any ammo left. Yep. Radio station. Brought a few tubes. 
Somebody in that field. Don't know who they are. No friends of mine. Jerry vehicles. Parked in that farmyard. More in back. Must be a headquarters. Houses around here look kind of suspicious. Might be something in them. Nothing in that one. Nothing in that one. Could be wrong. Nothing in that one. Uh -oh. What do you know? Back at Alto. No one is sweating out 6-5 squadron. 6-6 six, six is taking off. No one will sweat them out either. There are too many missions. Nine for today. When you don't fly, you've got things to do. Try to make some sort of life for yourself. In trying, you've improvised an American community. Step off the field, you're in Corsica. Step back on, you're in America. This is part of the war too, the endless detail of living. The dust is a problem. Dust is good for the laundry business. And laundry. Branches everywhere. Community laundry. Three day service. And for the rugged individualist, Water supply, pump, heating unit, washing machine. The sergeant used to sell these in New Orleans. He's keeping his hand in. The barber shop. And for the next customer, always something to read. Never more than a year old. Bus line, lunchtime special. And for the intellectually minded, it's time for the more serious things, like practicing your yo-yo. If there's anything you want, don't ask for it. Build it. Build as though you'd be here forever, knowing you may get orders to move tomorrow. 6-6 found this canyon, made it their living area. Nobody said they couldn't. Nobody says you can't have a house. Build it. Nobody says your squadron can't have a beach club. Build one. Nobody says you can't dam up a river to make a swimming hole. This American community has everything. When you come off your shift and somebody else is carrying the ball, you try to relax, enjoy yourself. In danger a couple hours a day, the rest of the time, you're out of it. Beach club's a busy place. So is the Mediterranean. Mussolini once called it Mare Nostrum, our sea. But that was yesterday. Yachtsman. An old wing tank and a few odds and ends make quite a boat. The crew chief scrounge parts. Scrounge is polite for steel. Scrounge him from wrecked jerry planes, banged up Italian cars. Old parachutes for sails. They use only the best quality junk. Sometimes when you can get a PX ration of beer, you drink it. Then you look like this. Alto's the best deal you ever had. The country club. A lot of land, a lot of sun. Your American community has everything. Except the things you really want. 
There are times you'd rather be flying than waiting around, killing time. Because when you're flying, you don't have that feeling of the day, the week, and months slipping by. Slipping by and leaving you standing still. These are your years. Years to get started. Find yourself. Your job, profession. Get married. Kids. Home of your own. These are the years that count. So, you have your pets. To give and receive affection. In return for affection, sea ration, bug brother. As always in affairs of the heart, some have peculiar tastes. Six six squadron, heading out. Six five squadron, heading home. A meeting in the air comes and goes fast. Six five, leader section. One plane light. When you reformed after strafing, you noticed it. Nobody saw it happen. Maybe spun in, maybe bailed out. You'll think about it later. Now you're waiting for that first sight of home. That's Sarag Air Base. That's Bebenko. You're on your own street. Alto's first turn to the left, three fields down. Keep the formation tight. When you fly over those other outfits, you want to look good. Show them how it's done. Alto, home. You come in low and peel up. You peel up to reduce speed. Space the planes 20 seconds apart for landing. Second and third flights go on past the field. They'll circle back when the first flight is down. gear. Second flight peels up. Third flight will circle again. This is all the flying the ground crews see. You like to give them a kick. Sometimes you're tired, land them rough. It's embarrassing. The Colonel's not happy about the flak holes. New airplane. His crew chief will be mighty sore. And how will you explain this away? Then after the interrogation, you relax. Grab off some donuts and coffee. Jive with a Red Cross girl who meets every mission and fly the show all over again on the ground. Wyman goes back to work at being a colonel, missing an action report to sign. A telegram from the War Department has to start somewhere. By mid-April, every rail line in Italy was blocked. We drew a line of interdiction across the country. No train could move south of it. South of it, the railroad system was dead. But the German had to keep the supplies moving, still had highways. He took to the roads, so we took to the roads. This is what the Germans fear most. You don't blame them. This is the way Rommel got it. He isn't the only one. When you clobber a highway, you burn plenty of ammo. 
cyclic rate of fire, 800 rounds a minute. You've got eight guns, 106 bullets a second. Rockets. Those aren't just trucks and Germans. You're stopping ammunition before it's fired on the Fifth Army front. And you're doing it 200 miles behind that front. In the weeks that followed, from Corsica to Italy was like a trip to the corner drugstore. You could do it in your sleep. We averaged eight and nine missions a day at the 57th. The French flew about as many. Lafayette Escadrille, the 324th and the 86th over in Italy, the 79th next door. It was good to look up and watch them go by. But there were other things. There were those pillars of smoke. Never knew when you'd see one. That's a wreck. A P-47's cooking, and there's a man in it. When they hit like this, there's nothing to do. Let them burn, and stay clear of the exploding ammo. Keep on landing, you have to. No place to park up there. Why did it happen? Engine cut out for a second. 200 yards from the runway. 200 yards from home. Flak damage might have caused it, You'll never know for sure. All you know is, for some, the war is expensive. You wish the people back home could at least see it. We kept up the pressure. And by the beginning of May, the roads were practically closed. If one man on a motorcycle appeared on the highway by day, he was a dead pigeon. The German took to the sea. Two months after we started, the strangle was on. The Germans had barely enough supplies for two weeks. That's when our ground forces attacked. Allied troops took Casino. We linked up with a beachhead at Anzio. And in three weeks, we're in Rome. on the ground pushed north, and as they moved up, they saw what had been done to help them. 10,000 enemy vehicles destroyed or damaged. In every town they took, no marshalling yard. How many German tanks went out of business because of the gasoline these trains never carried? They advanced, and they saw the bridges. How many German shells were never fired because they couldn't get across the rivers? The ground forces exploited their breakthrough. In plain language, they shot and killed Germans. and they ate up the country, almost 250 miles in one non-stop offensive. The ground forces won a battle, but they still had a war to fight, and you were still flying missions. Up from first light to last light, only the coming of darkness would stop you. Only the coming of darkness would bring the last missions home to Aldo. Then the long work day would end. Some men hit the sack early. And some spent another quiet evening at the club, Colonel Wyman's country club. 
for airplane drivers. The commanding general of the United States Army Air Forces, General Carl Spots, has asked me to tell you something about this picture. I, uh, I don't think I could do any better than just to read from his telegram to me. Thunderbolt was made in 1944, ancient history. It was made about one fighter bomber group in the Italian campaign. It happens to be an American group. But the same story could well be told of the Royal Air Force groups which participated so gallantly in the same air offensive. As a matter of fact, the story belongs to all men who fought for freedom and did it a long way from home. Signed, Spots. <laughs>